Good day, everyone. It's Jennifer McGuire. Now, today I wanted to talk about adding details to your stamped images using ink. These little details can make such a big impact in your final card, and it's worth the extra few minutes it takes to do so. They're very easy to do, and you only need a couple tools, and you likely already have them on hand. So I have these two examples for you first, and then I'll have one more example at the end of this video. I'm using some stamps today from Altenew. I really like their realistic stamps, and it's perfect for this technique. I'm starting out with the Pretty Pansy stamp set. I've always loved pansies because they're so strong and they hold up in the winter here in Cincinnati. So I'm excited to have a pansy stamp set. I'm using my Misty stamping tool today. However, you do not need it to do the layering with these stamp sets because they are so easy to line up. The only reason I'm using my Misty is I'm making several cards at once. So that's why I decided to use it. I like to start with the most solid image first. I find I get by far get best results that way. And with the lightest color ink. Now I'm using some new all to new colors today. These, this is a new set of yellows that goes from light to super dark. You can either buy them as a set or individually or as a set of cubes. And the cubes are wonderful too. So I'm starting with the light yellow. And then this is the set of green ink I'm going to use for all of my cards today. I really like this combination of these three colors of green. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this onto white cardstock and it stamps beautifully, especially that yellow. Man, that is a great, great yellow. I will give you a closer look at the Altenew inks at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. And I'll show you all the colors. Now I'm actually making multiple cards today and so I'll show you some of the steps along the way. Now I'm going to make some pansies in orange also. So this is the orange combination from Altenew. These came out a while ago, but I actually had never used them and boy is it also a beautiful set of orange. I'm also using purple because I always think of purple pansies. This is an older set of purple inks from Altenew and I'm starting again with the lightest colors first. So basically I've started some flowers and leaves with the lightest color, the most solid image in purples, orange, and yellow. Okay, so now I wanted to figure out what to stamp next. And this is like the backer card that comes with the Altenew stamps. I didn't have it yet, so they, I asked them to email it to me. That's why it's on my phone. But I'm looking at that to refer to what I should stamp next. I'm actually going to use that for something else later in this video too. So I was easily able to line up the next image. That's the image with the second most amount of surface area on it. And I am stamping that with one ink color darker. You can see that beautiful yellow there. And I actually did it with all my yellow pansies, my orange, and my purple. Just didn't show it in the video to save some time. So here we are with the third layer. And one of the things I wanted to mention to you is that when I line up my stamps, I get my head right over the images so I can closely look through them. When you line it up that way, it's very easy to do. I can't show that in the video because my head gets in the way and you'll see all my gray hair and my messy bun and all that. So I usually edit that out, but you really want to get down and look from all angles and you can line it up perfect every time. So I do edit that out so you don't have to see my messy hair, but it does help. Okay, so here we are with the darkest color of yellow. Look how beautiful that is. I'm just swooning over it. I do like that this Altenew stamp set offers the outline. So you can leave it as it is now, just with what you see, or you can stamp the outline like I did here. And I really like that look. But here I'm going to let you compare. The one on the left doesn't have the outline, and the one on the right does. So it's totally your option, and I love that they offer that. You could also use the outline just to do like watercoloring in it if you wanted to. Okay, so there are these little inside pieces that I can stamp with yellow in the inside. And I just quickly went through and did that. Here, there you saw the purple, and here is the orange. Man, that orange is so vibrant. So when I'm stamping, I often like to do a Google image search on the flower. And when I was looking at the pansies online, I noticed that there are a lot of lines in the flower. You can see like those lines coming out from the center. So I decided I wanted to add some details to these beautiful stamped images using tools that I have. By the way, there are some beautiful color combinations that you can use with pansy stamps. I just went with basic colors. 
Okay, so to do some lines kind of coming out from the center of the flower, I'm actually using the straight end of my bone folder. There's just like a little straight end on there, and I'm pressing it onto my ink pad and then tapping it onto my stamped image. And you'll see there these little lines of ink coming out from the center. Now keep in mind dye inks are usually a little bit darker and they lighten a little bit as they soak into the paper and kind of settle in. So this will soften a bit, but it's amazing the difference it makes. So I'm just using that little straight edge of my bone folder to ink up and press down onto the paper. You could also use maybe an edge of a credit card and just ink up a tiny little bit of the edge and then tap that onto your paper. Now look at, you can see the difference between the two and this will build up as I add more. You can see those kind of lines coming out from the center. And I'm gonna do this on the other pansy too. Now you'll notice this probably more in uh, maybe the purple flower that we're gonna do in a moment, but boy, I love the added details. Now when I'm tapping that little straight edge of my bone folder onto the ink pad, I don't actually tap the whole part of the edge, just like a little bit, like a quarter inch of it, so I can add that to my project. Now I'm going to do the same with the leaves, and I'm just following the pattern of the leaves. So you can kind of see those veins or whatever they're called in the leaves. I'm following that pattern and just adding a little more ink. And I choose an ink color that kind of is medium shade. So it's not too noticeable, but is, isn't too subtle either. So here's a quick comparison. The top card has no details added. The bottom card does have details added. It really adds a lot to these realistic looking images. And it's especially effective on the purple and orange flowers. So I'm gonna show you a photo of those with the same added details. And it really makes a big difference. So here you can see on the purple, those lines that are kind of coming out from the center really adds a lot to it, and the same with the orange. And I also find that this is good for other stamp sets where there isn't as much layering as these, so you can really add more realistic touches to your images. Now I cut these all out by hand. There are coordinating dies available, but I like to cut out by hand. I don't know, I find it therapeutic. And when I do so, I always like to ink the edges. This is another little detail that makes a big difference in the final project. So here you can see a leaf that didn't have the edges inked and one that does. And I just ink with whatever ink I stamped with. Now a lot of these details don't seem like much individually, but when you pull them together on a card, they make great impact. Okay, so now I wanted to show you how I put these into cards and then I'll show you another example. For the background, I'm using this new large stamp set from Altenu. Now I'm just using that large outline image, but I wanted to show you that they include images that allow you to stamp the color into the pattern, which I think is so cool. So it saves a lot of time over coloring individually and it gives you many ways to use the stamp set. Now I am just using this for a background on my cards. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, and I'm stamping that background with Versamark ink. And on one card, I'll add white embossing powder, and on the other, I'll add gold embossing powder, and I'll heat set that. So I'm gonna make two cards using those pansies, one with the gold background and one with the white. The gold is a little more outspoken and the white is a little more subtle. Okay, so what I did for this background is I used a rectangle die from Hero Arts and just die cut a window from the center. You could also use a craft knife and ruler if you wanted to. Now I'm going to put some foam tape around the outside edge only, and I'm gonna put that onto a top folding note card. The reason I put the craft foam only on the outside edge is I'm going to tuck some of my flowers in behind that window so they look like they're peeking out, and that leaves me some room to tuck them in. Now I wasn't really sure how to arrange my pansies, but I noticed on that packaging from the Altenew stamp set, I loved how they had theirs arranged, so I'm totally copying it. And that is a great way to find inspiration. And all I did was glue those into the frame using foam tape and regular adhesive so they look like they're peeking out. So after I put this all on the front of a white note card, I had some white peeking out the top and the bottom, and I thought it was kind of boring. I wanted to make it gold instead. So here's the trick that I did since it was all glued together. I pressed some Versamark ink onto a piece of white cardstock, and I put on some gold embossing powder. After I heat set this, I have some gold embossed paper. Now from this, I'm going to trim two thin strips of cardstock, one to glue at the top of my card and one to glue at the bottom. And then I'm also going to use this as a mat for my heat embossed sentiment. 
I stamped and gold heat embossed a sentiment from an Alta New stamp set. I'll show it to you in a few minutes. I'm gluing that onto that gold paper and then I'm just going to trim that down so I have a thin gold mat around the sentiment. This is a great way to make the sentiment stand out and kind of tie in with the rest of the card. Adding these pieces to my completed card was actually easy. Now for the gold on the top and the bottom, I just put adhesive on the back and I kind of tucked it in there onto the card. Then once I have both the top and the bottom added on, I can just go ahead and flip my card over and trim anything that's hanging off. So now it looks like my card was assembled on a gold embossed card, but really it's just a little strip glued there. Now to add my sentiment strip, I'm using these new thin foam strips and I am crazy about these. I got them in a Simon Says Stamp card kit and I had to go back and, uh, and buy more of them. I'll link to them so you can check them out. I like that they're thin so I can put them onto tiny areas like this and it tears easy so you can make smaller pieces if you want to. I'm crazy about them. Okay, so I added that sentiment. This is the stamp set. It's called Sketchy Florals from Altenew. That's where I got that love and hugs message that I like so much. Now here's another great detail idea for adding to your cards and that is to use your quickie glue pen to add embossing powder. So I put a little quickie glue pen in the center of my flowers, put on some gold embossing powder and heat set that. Gives a nice gold touch to those flowers and using the quickie glue pen makes it very easy to do. Okay before we move on I wanted to show you what I did on the inside of these cards. Now Altenew just came out with a great stamp set for the inside of cards. It's called Beautiful Inside. I get asked about the inside of cards all the time. I often leave them blank and write my own message, but this, this is so awesome. So you can see it has bold sentiments for the front of the card, but then it has a variety of longer sentiments for the inside, and they cover pretty much every occasion you could want. So this is great for stamping on the inside of cards, and I'm really excited about it. You'll be seeing me use it a lot in future videos. Okay, so for a final look at these two cards, this one has the gold heat embossed background and is a little more outspoken, and here's the subtle white heat embossed version. I did stamp that same background on the flap of a matching envelope for each of the cards. It really kind of ties everything together. With all the details on the front, the sentiment on the inside, and the matching envelope, we're good to go. Okay, before we take a closer look at the Alta New inks, I wanted to show you one more example of adding details to your stamped images, and I did that on the flower that you see here. This beautiful flower and leaves is from the new Alta New Totally Tropical stamp set. Here it is here, you can see there's lots of flowers, leaves, and sentiments. I just did one of the flowers and a couple leaves. Now I did the flower with four new shades of pink ink from Altenew. These are beautiful pink colors. And I went ahead and did the stamping off screen just to save some time. I did the leaves also with the same green inks I used before. And here is another example of adding details to your project. Now here I have a stylus that just has a rounded tip. Many people have this tool for dry embossing and I'm just tapping it onto my ink pad and then making little dots with the ink onto my project. This is very easy. It takes a few minutes, but really in the grand scheme of a card, it doesn't take long at all. If you don't have a stylus, you could also use the pointed end of your bone folder or look around for another tool that has a small rounded tip. So here on the pink flower, I added some darker pink dots towards the center, and then some medium pink dots kind of coming out from the center and joining in with the edge of the flower. I think it's fun to add these details. And by the way, you could also use the, a marker, a fine tip marker to do this, but sometimes I struggle finding a marker to match my inks nicely. So using the inks is a great match. Okay, so now I have a background for this that's white heat embossed using that medallion stamp that I used earlier. Kind of did it off center, it's kind of down in the corner. And I wanted to add a little bit of ink to the background to kind of highlight the area where the flower will be. So I'm using the lightest yellow ink, it's a citrus yellow I believe, and I'm using an ink blending tool to very lightly add a little bit of yellow in that bottom corner. Once I'm done with what I want, I go ahead and use a dry cloth to buff it off and you have a little subtle color to kind of make a focal point for your flowers. So I pulled this together into a card with some gold heat embossing on the right edge and a gold heat embossed sentiment from the Totally Tropical stamp set. And then I added two shades of pink pearls just for some accents and also some gold embossing detail to the center of the flower. 
I again used the beautiful inside stamp set, a different one of the messages, and stamped that with matching pink ink on the inside. I did use that medallion to stamp onto the flap of my envelope, and now all of the details of the card go together nicely. Okay, so I have used a few new colors of Altenew ink today. There are four new sets of colors, so that's 16 new colors. And I thought I'd show you all the Altenew inks together. First, let's look at the new color combinations. Up here, you see the four new yellow inks. And below that are the yellow inks that they had come out with in the past. So I wanted to show you how they compare. Those yellows across the top are very bright and I am head over heels, always looking for a good yellow and this definitely does the job. Then they also came out with a new set of pinks. That's what you see across the top there. On the bottom is the set of pinks that they came out with previously. You can see the color names on there. So the ones on the top are more of a true pink, whereas the ones on the bottom kind of have a purple tone to it. So the newer ones are more of a true pink. That's what I used on that card that I just did, and those pinks are gorgeous. They also came out with a beautiful set of blues, and they are the set that you see across the top there. And below that are the blues that they had come out with in the past. And you can see there is a pretty good difference between all of them. The top seems to be more of a true kind of turquoisey blue. In the middle you have a basic like denim blue set. And on the bottom is like a purplish blue. That Parisian blue right there. Oh, oh I'm so crazy about that. Haven't used it yet. I need to use that. But again, the new ones are across the top. I also thought I'd show you a closer look at my ink swatch pages for the complete Altenew ink collection. Now I'm just going to slowly show you all of the colors. If you want to take a closer look at a color or name of a color, you can just hit pause. So you will notice here that most of the Altenew inks come in four together. So there is a light, a medium, a dark, and a super dark. You can buy them separately or together, and you can buy them in sets of cubes. Now, I really like this because it takes the guesswork out of what colors go together. And this is a great dye ink. They call it a crisp dye ink. So it really does stamp and dry beautifully. Now this ink I find doesn't really stain my stamps much and I know that people find that to be a great quality. You can see there are many colors here, pretty much any color you need, including black. Now if you want an ink swatch download to create your own ink swatch pages, you can just head to my blog where I'll have a free download for this ink. And I will link to a video showing you how I do the inks and where you can find ink swatch downloads for many inks out there. So if you're interested in any of these products, linked below in the YouTube description as always, but go to my blog for much more information including that free download. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you again soon.